back on the throttle, flat out through the left, over 100 on the exit. Such a joy to drive this car, but can it take on the alpha for pure driving thrill? Alfa Romeo is one of the most evocative names in the world of motoring, but for the last few decades the firm hasn't had a sports car that lives up to their illustrious sporting heritage. But now they have this car, the Alfa Romeo 4C. With a carbon fibre chassis, a dual clutch gearbox and a mid-engine layout, the spec sheet reads like a supercar, yet it costs less than £50,000. But how does it compare to arguably the best mid-engine sports car in the world, Porsche's Cayman? Well, in an Auto Express track battle, Let's find out. The stunningly beautiful 4C is a return to Alfa Romeo's sports car past. With its carbon fibre chassis, it weighs just 895 kilograms, while the 1.7 litre four-cylinder turbo engine produces 237 brake horsepower and 350 newton metres of torque. Now into its second generation, the Porsche Cayman is famed for its perfect handling. The 2.7 litre flat six engine has 271 brake horsepower and 290 newton metres of torque but it weighs 1,310 kilograms, so that's 400 kilograms heavier than the carbon fiber Alfa Romeo. So we've got a very standard Cayman. It's not a Cayman S, it's a standard Cayman. Hasn't got PASM active damping, hasn't got ceramic brakes, hasn't got the active engine mounts. It's just a very standard Cayman. And driving up here on the road, Obviously the Cayman's lovely, it's that works on so many layers, it's a fantastic road car, rides relatively nicely, quite comfortable on the road, so it's got that element. But the big question is, can it take on the Alpha for pure driving thrill? And so many things about this car just feel perfect. The second you drive onto the circuit, you just feel absolutely at the centre of the action. Everything's beautifully balanced, you just feel like the car is pivoting around you. So obviously mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, just absolutely perfect balance in the chassis. There's a little bit of roll in the car, but nothing bad, you know, it's just such a wonderfully well-balanced car. It's got a sports exhaust, this one, which is why it sounds really good. Traction is amazing. It's quite long gearing in the, in the Cayman, so, and the engine only really starts to sing above four and a half thousand RPM. So on the road, you can sometimes feel like it's a little bit out of its comfort zone, but on the track, you get it working. Really sounds amazing. So that's the first lap done, a little bit of heat into the tires. Let's come round and start a flying lap. So I've lost the line, second gear. And again, because that gearing is quite short, we're down to second here. There's so much feel through the steering that you just always know what the car is doing. Change of direction is amazing there, lots of grip as the car's loaded up with that long, long left hander up to third gear. Just over 100 miles an hour now, 110. Hard on the brakes, down the second gear for the chicane. Loads of feel through the brakes. ABS doesn't come in too hard. Hard on the power. Third gear, amazing traction on the exit of that tight corner. Again, into these high speed corners. The, the control and the balance on the car is just, really feel what's going on. It's just such a joy to drive this car. So beautifully balanced, sounds great communicates so well. Third gear, high speed change of direction here. And you can feel the weight through here, but still pretty amazing through there. Right up at the top of the revs in third. Down the second, really good brakes into the apex. Great traction, works well over the bump. Into the last corner. It probably looks pretty effortless on the camera, but it really is such a lovely car and across the line. So the Porsche was a joy to drive and lap the circuit in 1 minute 12.7 seconds. The question is, is the Alfa Romeo going to be faster? Starting a practice lap, the first thing you notice about this car is it doesn't have power steering. Now, purists might quite like the idea of the fact of a car without power steering because really the Surely the reason for not having power steering is to save weight, but also to give you an uninterrupted purity of steering feel. Unfortunately, the steering feel isn't, isn't actually very good. The car, the steering really squirms around and kicks back quite a lot, but you can't really feel what the front end's doing, which is a shame, because you, the one thing you're going to want if you've got 
no power steering is some good steering feel, but which is a shame. The engine's quite quite coarse. It's not a nice noise like the uh, six-cylinder Porsche. But it does make itself known in the cabin. The dual-clutch gearbox is pretty quick and uh, perfectly suited to the job. The first other disappointment you're noticing really is the fact that the brake pedal, the boat, the pedal is very strong. And there's plenty of stopping power. There's not a lot of feel to the brake pedal, and it's quite hard to brake progressively. The retardation is quite grabby, and it gets into the ABS very quickly. But the body control to that high-speed corner is just amazing. There's hardly any roll in this car. It does feel like a really planted track car. So let's see if that gives it the advantage against the stopwatch. So coming around now, starting the lap, trying to get good traction out of the corner. Traction is actually pretty good. Much shorter gearing than the Porsche, so we're a gear up into a lot of these corners. So it's third gear into the first corner here. Really good through there as it changes direction from left to right. A little bit of understeer as you get on the power. There is a little bit more understeer in this car than you probably would like. And because of the fact that with the turbo power, it's quite hard to dial the understeer into oversteer because when you get back on the throttle, you haven't, the engine's not on boost and then it suddenly comes into boost. It's better now the engine, the track's dried off. When the track was damp, that made the car quite edgy, quite tricky to control on the limit. Now that it's dried off, it's pretty good. And through these high speed corners, you turn in and the uh, really stiff body control means there's lots of grip and it is really planted through here. It really can't stand on it. But again, just a little bit too much understeer on the exit. Mighty through here though. A little lift through the right, back on the throttle, flat out through the left, over 100 on the exit. Hard on the brakes, squirms a little bit again, too much on the braking, down through the gears. Second gear, third gear. And around to the last corner. Coming up to the line now and across the line. Incredibly, given how different they are to drive, this pair recorded an identical lap time around our test track. That's the first time that's ever happened. So what's going to win our track battle? Well, the Alpha is beautiful, has loads of grip, and fantastic body control. But unfortunately, it lacks the sublime chassis, communication, and fingertip feel of the Porsche. And the Cayman is also more practical, cheaper, and better to live with day to day. So while we love the look of the Alpha, the all-round abilities of the Cayman make it one of the best sports cars money can buy, and it wins this track battle.